Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I'm a 29-year-old woman, and I've been dating my boyfriend, 27, for almost a year now. And everything has been wonderful. We found each other on social media and quickly became friends. We felt really compatible, so it didn't take long for us to start dating. I'm an accountant in a reputable firm, and he is an engineer. We decided to live together, and my boyfriend suggested that I share his apartment with him. I was very excited and thought it was a great idea because it would allow me to move to a new location, which has always been exciting for me. As I moved in with him, I learned that his eldest sister and her two children would be joining us. I was surprised and asked my boyfriend why he hadn't brought it up earlier. He told me that his sister was his only family and that he couldn't leave her alone because he was so protective of her. I told her that it made me uneasy and that he should have told me before I moved in. I told him it was okay and he expressed his appreciation for my decision to stay with him and his sister. Everything was great in the start, but slowly I started feeling like his sister would interfere a lot and would ask about everything. She would get up early and would keep an eye on what was going on while we would get ready for our offices. This made me very uneasy and I felt like I was being inspected. She could easily wake up late as she was not a working woman, but I do not know what made her wake up that early and see what was going on in the house. She would stand in the kitchen and stare at me while I would prepare my breakfast. She would sit on the sofa and look at me while I would have my breakfast. It was very weird for me and made me sick. I discussed this with my boyfriend and he told me that she was just being helpful and remained around so that we could ask her for help if needed. This pissed me even more as she would not even touch anything or try to help and would only stare at what one was doing. She would bombard me with questions when I would return from the office. She'd start by asking how my day was. Uh, they would ask about my work and would even ask how was the weather outside. I mean, she could simply get up and see out of the window. We had divided house chores among ourselves, and what my boyfriend and I had to do remained untouched even if my sister-in-law was free all day. My point is that even if we were out and earning to run our house, she could at least take the responsibility for the house chores. One evening, my boyfriend and I decided to dine out, and when we told her about our plan, she told us that she would be scared to stay at home alone with her kids while it was dark outside. My boyfriend told her that we would come back early, but she was not ready to listen. She told us that we could go for lunch tomorrow, and if we had planned to go for dinner today, she was going with us. She, of course, went out with us, and I was no more interested in the dinner. One day, at the dinner table, my sister-in-law told us that she wanted to join the gym, as she had gained a lot of weight. My boyfriend told her that she could join whenever she wanted to. She said that she would be going to the gym before dinner after we had returned from our offices, as she could not leave her kids alone at home, and also could not take them along with her. I asked her, as she was the one who was supposed to be preparing the dinner, how was she going to manage it? She announced that she would be doing laundry instead of me, and I could take the responsibility for the dinner. I was shocked. How would I come back from the office, prepare dinner, and then babysit her kids? I finished my dinner and went to my room. I told my boyfriend that it was not going to happen. If she wanted to join the gym, she could go in the, in the afternoon or whenever, but not in the evening. My boyfriend told me that he would talk to her. My boyfriend tried to talk to her, but she was not ready to listen and told him that as he would do whatever suited him, she could also live her life according to her. My boyfriend told me what she said and also said that he would be preparing dinner from now on. I told him that dinner was not the problem. How would I babysit her kids right after the office? I told him that her whole idea was shitty. My sister-in-law joined the gym within a few days, and my boyfriend and I were loaded with extra responsibility. I did not create any fuss as my boyfriend was already helping us as much as he could by preparing dinner. Almost a week later, I caught cholera 
and was admitted to the hospital. My sister-in-law had to pause her gym and look after the house all alone. She would also prepare meals for me and would bring them to the hospital. Yesterday, she came and announced that she was going to leave her kids with me in the hospital as she had to do a lot of work and couldn't manage. She has left them here and I cannot believe that she has asked me to babysit her kids while I am admitted to the hospital. My boyfriend came to see me and asked where his sister was. I told him the whole scenario and he was shocked. He called my sister-in-law and asked her what was going on and how she could leave her kids in the hospital with a patient to babysit them. She told him that there was no other option and if he wanted her to prepare meals for me and look after my needs, he had to let her leave her kids with me. My boyfriend told me that I had to stay in the hospital for two more days and he would manage by himself, but I could not tolerate this mean behavior of my sister-in-law. My friend came to me after my husband had gone back to his office. I told her how my sister-in-law had made me babysit her kids even when I was hospitalized and was that weak. We were discussing her when an idea hit my mind and I asked my friend if she could take both the kids with her. She asked me why I wanted her to do that and I told her that I would tell my sister-in-law that I had gone to sleep and didn't know where the kids had gone. My friend told me that it was a great idea to teach my sister-in-law that I was not her maid or something and that she could not use me as a babysitter. My friend packed the kids' stuff and told them that she was going to take them to an amusement park and left with the kids. I'm waiting for my sister-in-law to arrive and see how she reacts. My sister-in-law arrived and I was already faking sleep. She woke me up and asked if the kids were in the cafeteria. I told her that I had no idea where the kids were as I had gone to sleep. She got worried and told me that she would go and check. She went around and came back after some time and announced that the kids were not anywhere. I asked her how it was possible and if she had checked in the washrooms. She told me that she was going to ask the guard and left my room. She came back and told me that the guard had seen a woman taking two kids along with her. My sister-in-law was now trembling with fear and I thought of telling her the truth but I wanted to tease her a bit. She called my boyfriend and told him that the kids were missing. My boyfriend dropped everything and arrived at the hospital. He informed the authorities and exploded at his sister that it was her fault. She told him that she had to leave them with someone as she could not manage everything on her own. He yelled at her that how could she leave her kids with a patient and how a patient was supposed to look after her kids. My sister-in-law started weeping while my husband went to see CCTV recordings and found that a woman had taken both the kids but he was unable to recognize her. I am now scared to tell the truth. My husband had gone to inquire about the hospital security and had decided to inform the police after that. I called him and told him that I knew where the kids were and he could come back to my room. My sister-in-law, who was already with me, asked me what was going on. When my husband arrived, I told him that my friend texted me that she was bringing the kids back, as she had taken them because I was asleep and she could not leave the kids alone. My boyfriend took a sigh of relief and told my sister-in-law to keep calm. My friend arrived with the kids and the kids told her mom that they had the best time of their lives. My friend had taken them to the amusement park and then bought them hamburgers and chips. The kids enjoyed it very much. My boyfriend told his sister that she had to be careful next time and that her kids were her responsibility and no one else's. NTA I can understand how you had felt as it already gets hectic when you're a working woman and then to be told to look after someone else's kids. OP's sister-in-law acted like an entitled bitch and tried her best to exploit OP. She did not even spare her when OP was hospitalized and needed to rest. She needed to be taught a lesson as she was not ready to listen to anyone and wanted things to be her way. NTA OP is not an a-hole in this story as she had suffered a lot, but the idea of sending sister-in-law's kids with her friend to worry sister-in-law was a bit too harsh. She needed to understand that her sister-in-law was a mother and how sensitive parents are in the case of their kids. The kids had a great time and sister-in-law was also taught a lesson, but the amount of stress that was given to OP's boyfriend and his sister was a bit too much. OP could just take a stand against sister-in-law. Next story. I'm a 28-year-old woman 
and my wedding's coming up, and I didn't invite my sister Megan, Bertie. This is due to the antics that she's pulled in the past. I'm really not interested in having a repeat at my wedding. My dad, 57, is mad at me, but I told him it's none of his business. Was I the a-hole? When our eldest sister, 32, got a new job, Megan kept showing up at her building in full robes. Megan is a witch and a pagan, because she wanted to purify our eldest sister's workspace. She was removed by building security several times because she kept trying to access the floor without a key card, and the saga only ended when Megan was arrested for trespassing. It was so embarrassing for our eldest sister, and she took another job elsewhere and doesn't talk to Megan about work now. My eldest sister is Wiccan, but she keeps it private. Megan has also come over without notice to bless and purify our apartments, houses, if we move, even though no one asks her to. Against my better judgment, I didn't object when Megan came along to the public part of my PhD defense, along with my dad. Megan kept interrupting to cast spells to help me succeed and would not stop talking. A professor had security escort her out. My dad thought that professor was uptight. When our brother, 26, and his wife, 26, was pregnant last year, Megan kept bringing her potions to drink and was following her around trying to hold crystals over her stomach to transfer properties to the baby. My sister-in-law is such a sweetheart and tried to indulge Megan, but it went so bad that our brother had to step in. Megan wanted to put plants and crystals in the nursery and spells on the walls, and my brother won't let her come over or be around my niece at all. Megan said she wants to do a midnight blessing ceremony for my niece, even though my brother says no. My dad lives with Megan, and I think he's just immune to her antics. Parts of the house look like the stereotype of a witch you would see on television. When he had knee surgery, Megan had a bowl full of her witch ingredients that she lit on fire in the hospital room and got thrown out of the hospital. I have no problem with anyone practicing or not practicing a religion. My eldest sister is Wiccan. But Megan's problem is that she thinks everyone wants to participate in her pagan faith. Even if people tell her no or to go away, she persists. She makes a scene all the time. Given she doesn't listen to the word no, I don't want Megan there. The incidents I listed above are just the tip of the iceberg. My dad is mad at me for not inviting her, and I said, who I invite is none of his business. He's not paying for my wedding, so he gets no say. Him and I are at loggerheads, because he thinks I should not exclude Megan, even with how she's acted in the past, because she's family. Definitely NTA. Weddings are stressful and beautiful all in the same moment. It sounds like your sister wouldn't be receptive to having a, a discussion about your expectations for her at the wedding. I would point out you should have a contingency plan for someone to stand guard at your wedding as she'll likely know the date and venue from your dad. Have one of your friends or brother be on the alert to intercept her so that she doesn't make a scene if she shows up. Best of luck. I hope you have a beautiful day. Sometimes family just sucks. NTA, your sister is no worse than a screaming Christian at an abortion protest. Her beliefs do not justify her rude, childish, unprofessional, and ultimately harmful behavior. Tell your dad that in the past your sister has made it clear that she will not behave, no matter the circumstance, and this is simply the result of that. Explain that you accept your sister as she is, but that does not mean that you should not protect yourself against her more harmful behavior. Next story. My girlfriend, 23, and I, 21-year-old male, have lived together for about a year and decided a few months ago to get a pet. My girlfriend grew up with a cat and has always said that she wanted one. So fast forward a few months into the adoption process for a kitten. I've done literally all of the work for getting a cat. She says that she has work and school. I told her I'm just asking if she prioritizes this cat that she allegedly wants so much. I'm not even asking for a 50-50 commitment. I just have work, so I know I've got more time. 
I drove us to the animal shelter, filled out the online forms for the adoption approval, did research on how to make our apartment cat-friendly, and got all the care products that we'd need for a cat. I had one thing that she needed to do all these months, get approval from our apartment. She put it off for months, despite me reminding her every single day. She finally asked our leasing staff, who said that they'd asked the property manager. We never received any updates, so I asked my girlfriend to go ask again, which she protested for weeks because she was worried about coming off as rude. I told her that she's making it clear that she doesn't want a cat. She says that isn't true. I say words don't mean anything to me, but actions do. So even so, I say fine. Email them. This way, it's a compromise, and she won't get anxious about an awkward confrontation with our leasing staff. She doesn't even do that for a few days, but when she does, we get ghosted again. One day, I saw the property manager. I tell my girlfriend she's downstairs in our lobby, and now would be a good time to go ask. She says that she's busy studying, so we end up sending more emails, costing us more time. Finally, we get approval and we just have to pick a kitten and take it home. I check adoption sites every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. Yesterday, I found one. He checked all our boxes. Male black kitten with a friendly temperament. I asked my girlfriend if we could drive to the shelter right then. She says no, because a month from now, we got on a six-day cruise, and that's too much time during its formative kitten months which would cause it too much stress. Fine. I told her one of my good friends, who's a major cat guy and very responsible, would be more than happy either taking him home for a week or living at ours to keep him company. She says no. At this point, I get mad, saying it only took this long because of her bottlenecking the whole process. And when the stars finally align, she decides to delay us again for a minor inconvenience that I offered a perfectly fine solution to. After seeing our argument going nowhere, I put my foot down and say, we're no longer getting a cat, because all the plus effort I put into this is being disrespected. I tell her I'm selling all the things we got for a cat online. She cries, gets hostile, and says I'm being controlling. Obviously, I feel bad because I've made my partner upset, but I think I've been patient enough. NTA, but do you want a cat? Because don't be an a-hole to yourself if you want to bring little hideous nightmare, the destroyer of worlds, home because she's not committing. You're pretty far into the process, cat dad. NTA, pets are a big commitment, and if she's not willing to put in the work, you're going to be taking care of it. Aside from homework, litter, grooming, feeding, cleaning, You have vet visits and the need for a sitter if you go somewhere. She doesn't seem ready for it. I would wait until after any vacations. And cats are way easier than other animals, but she seems lazy. TBH. 